Aloha. As our island community has grown, Hawaiian Electric Company has adapted to support the needs of our customers. Now, after serving Oahu's residents for decades, parts of the electric system are aging. It's time to install upgrades and take advantage of stronger materials and new technology. One of the most important projects is upgrading the backbone of the grid, the main transmission system that sends electricity from power plants to neighborhoods across Oahu. Many of these structures are located in rugged mountain terrain, inaccessible to our bucket trucks. This work is challenging and requires specialized crews and equipment. This is the story about why we fly. First, let's take a look at what is involved in the construction of a new structure. It all starts here at engineering. The old structures, you know, while they serve their purpose, you know, many of them have seen the end of their useful life and the new ones are designed to be less maintenance. The existing structures are not self-supporting. They have guy wires to help um, support the lateral and dead end loads. Many of them are lattice towers and lattice towers have many, many, many bolts that require, you know, maintenance and changing out over time and even the members may, may get corroded. The new structures are constructed of tubular steel, galvanized and painted. They're flanged together, meaning they're bolted. The pieces are bolted together and they don't have any guy wires that provide the additional lateral support. So some of the things that we consider when we're doing our design are where the easement is located, where the existing structure is placed within the easement, and whether there's space for a new structure either adjacent to, you know, in line with, or somehow we build it around the existing structure. Um, we also consider whether there's endangered species or endangered plants. So we send a botanist out there to do that work. So from the time, you know, we complete our engineering design to the time we get the structure on island, I would estimate it's about six months to fabricate, paint, and ship over the structure to us once we place the order. From the drawing board to the ridge top, the site work is ready to begin. The helicopters we use come in a variety of sizes and from different manufacturers. As you'll see, it's all a matter of picking the right tool for the job. Whether it's company crews or contractors doing the work, the process is almost always the same. First, contractors are flown in to dig the holes for the foundation. A typical foundation might be 5 feet in diameter by 15 to 20 feet deep, but can be bigger depending on structure size, soil type, and topography. A compressor and air tools may be airlifted in, but all that soil from the hole has to be pulled out by hand and five gallon pails. Once the proper depth and shape has been achieved, the anchor cages to which the steel structure are later bolted are flown in. A large helicopter, in this case the Sikorsky, must negotiate the existing lines above the new foundation and lower the steel cage into the hole. This pilot makes it look easy, but wind and rain, along with existing conductors and guy wires, can make this maneuver challenging even to the best pilots. The lines are de-energized while this work is taking place. Forms for the concrete foundation are then assembled and the anchor bolts are set to the correct height and orientation. The next phase of construction, the concrete pour, is intense. Once started, it cannot be stopped. Large buckets able to hold a half cubic yard of concrete are flown to the site and emptied into a hopper. A pump then moves the fluid concrete through a large hose and into the hole containing the anchor bolts. The pilot then flies back to the landing zone, returns the empty bucket, and picks up a form. This cycle is repeated over and over until the form is filled. This is what the pilot sees as he delivers his payload. It can take as many as 60 trips to move 30 cubic yards of concrete the capacity of five trucks. The pilot stops his run only if the helicopter needs to be refueled and then resumes until completion. Once the concrete cures and the forms are removed, the next critical stage of work begins. Each structure has two or more poles. Each pole is made up of sections. The number of sections depends on several factors. 
The sections are designed for a precision fit. In some cases, two sections might be bolted together on the ground prior to being lifted into place. This eliminates one additional lift and reduces flight time. The first section, put in place, fits over the anchor bolts and secures the structure to the foundation. Subsequent sections are carefully aligned by the helicopter pilot, working in unison with the ground spotter via radio. Once a section is in position, linemen belted in on a lower section bolt the two sections together, securing the top piece. The helicopter's cable is then released from the secured section and the pilot heads back to the landing zone for the next piece. Once the final section is in place, all of the bolts are torqued down to specification and the crew prepares to receive the cross on. Depending on the number of conductors they carry, our new structures may have one or two cross pieces. As with the support sections, the cross arm is flown in by helicopter and carefully lowered to waiting linemen who secure it to the structure with rigging. Using come-alongs, the arm is slowly maneuvered and bolted in place. Next, the power lines and shield wire are transferred from the old structure to the new structure. The conductors are moved one phase at a time. Once this procedure is finished, the old structure is demolished and the components flown out. On the ground, the pieces are cut up for recycling. It gives me great satisfaction knowing that those structures will be able to stand up, you know, hurricane force winds for many years to come. Strengthening and maintaining the electric system is critical to Hawaii's future. We will need a strong, reliable grid to support continued economic growth and connect with new sources of clean, renewable energy. By integrating these new resources and strengthening Oahu's grid, Wine Electric Company is building a better, stronger system to serve our island home for years to come. This has been a Hawaiian Electric Company News Bite. Thanks for watching.